Hello YouTubers, this is Dave Shaw and Joey Shaw and we are going to do another windshield install for you today uh, with Shaw Classic Auto Works. Today we are working on a 1979 F-250. 77. Oh, this one's a 77. Yeah. All right. And I keep getting uh, mixed up because it is the... It's a 4x4 four four and it's the low boy, and so I keep thinking later, but uh, it's late year, second half of the year, uh, 1977, so it's the low boy, F-250, 1977. This is a truck we've been doing for a customer. Um, we've uh, built a bed for this thing uh, with new box sides and a, and a donor bed, and Outer wheelhouses, uh, we've put, um, we rebuilt the bottoms of the doors on this truck. Um, some fender repairs, some roof repairs, and uh, it's still wearing a set of uh, roller wheels, wheels that it came in on. So um, that's going to change pretty soon, but. Truck's getting pretty close. It's this two-tone green. Um, the Ford guys, the Ford guys who own these, would know the color codes. I did too, but we do a lot of vehicles through here, and uh, I forget them. It seems to me they're uh, they're jades. Like one may be a, a jade, and the other one may be a, a dark jade or something like that. Um, very nice metallic colors. We matched the original paint codes and just mix it up in a chroma base so it's base clear nice looking truck and what we've got in here is uh, our new dash pad which came as a gray vinyl from LMC and we had had to uh, put a coating a vinyl coating we used the SEM products now this pad getting off topic but you can't just dye these it won't stick it's a it's some sort of a urethane um, vinyl here or whatever the pads made out of but it'll it'll flake right off we had to we had to use some SEM vinyl prep and some I think we used a bulldog adhesion promoter and everything's holding on pretty good but this is our wind, windshield channel here we got things cleaned up and uh, Joe is working on prepping our windshield. It just happens to be in the spray booth because we're tight on space here today. But what Joe is doing here is he is fitting our cord into the uh, pinch weld slot on the gasket. This rubber gasket we have already gone ahead. Sorry, we're starting a video late. We've already gone ahead and installed the gasket onto the glass. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It can be a bit of a wrestling match though, right Joe? Yeah. Kind of tough, but once you get it going, you just, you just work it on there. Um, we have a, a sealant that we're gonna be using today. And today we are using this 3M auto bedding and glazing compound 08509. Um, there are some other sealants on the market. We like this one. It's uh, a little bit more manageable, not quite so messy. Some of the um, glazing compounds are super runny and stringy and they're they're just a horrible mess this product is a little bit closer to like a uh, a roofing tar or something it's got a little bit of a a grain to it it's uh yeah yeah it's a bit on the heavy side um but what we're going to be doing is uh we like to cut these tubes off with a pretty small opening leave the stem relatively long uh, so, so we get a, a little bit more controllable application. 
And what we're going to be doing is, I'm looking at the inside of this gasket material right now. And this is the flap. My phone's having a hard time focusing. This is the flap that we're going to pull over the pinch weld from the outside of the truck to the inside of the truck. And what I'd like to do is apply this bedding compound inside of this channel here. So we're going to lay a bead of this stuff inside of here. And I will show you what I'm shooting for here as far as sealing things up. Now this, this outer lip, it's easier to see on the corners. This is going to hang out. This area here is actually going to make contact with the uh, shoulder area on the windshield frame itself. And then inside this slot will be the, the pinch weld metal. So keep in mind, looking at this area right here is where we're going to want to lay our um, bead of our bedding compound, right? And we're going to go out to the truck here for a second. And we'll take a look at the interface point for that bead of caulking is going to end up in this shoulder area here. Now the gasket flap itself is going to want to hang out around the corner a little bit here. Same with the bottom, it's going to want to hang out around out here. But we're shooting for some um, sealant, some bedding compound contact right in this area here. And then our gasket lip is going to pull over this area to the inside of the truck. We're using a cord to do that with. Um, we've done a lot of these. We've used a lot of different types of rope. You can use just about anything. You can use a parachute cord. You can use a nylon rope. Um, uh, we did the back one yesterday. We used like a, a nylon surveyor string. Yeah. And the really small stuff. We're talking like, really yeah, like 16th of an inch. Um, that was okay. But um, the downside of that is if you have to pull hard, it can have a tendency to cut or damage the, the rubber. Um, this is, more, is our favorite. This is probably like around a 3 16 And this particular cord is sold at like auto parts stores, hardware stores, as a recoil rope. So recoil rope for small engines it's really kind of stiff so that kind of helps when you're when you have to force it into this uh, inside of this gasket lip here all the way around it doesn't want to lay in there because the, the rubber is grippy and stuff um, but it's, it's got a slick exterior um, it's stiff I it it just it's our favorite if we if we have a choice of what cord we're gonna set out on with a windshield install this is our favorite. Um, you got here, Joe. Working on yesterday. Yeah, that's what we used yesterday on the back window. Um, back window on this truck happens to be a slider. Honestly, pretty easy installs. Uh, not nearly as uh, intimidating as a as a front windshield with these uh, with these corners and, and all the curves and everything. So obviously, what we're looking at here, you can see um, a tint strip. That would be the top of the windshield. And then um, what Joe has done, he's run this cord all the way around the slot, all the way around. And these two tails, he's come past each other with these and brought them up and taped the tails to the glass on the inside of the glass. That just keeps them from falling, getting in the way. And you'll see when we go to place this um, in the windshield tray, these things are ready for us to run with. And we'll, we'll start pulling and we're gonna go past each other. We'll each take a tail and try to run all the way around. It goes pretty good, obviously, on the bottom where you start running into a little bit of trouble is getting around corners, pulling this lip inside 
and then especially when you get to the top corner. So as you're going, you kind of have to go inside the truck, outside the truck. You, you need to be uh, kind of grabbing the glass from the top edge, pulling, pulling down to make sure that you're, you're forcing this gasket opening around the pinch weld. You want that pinch weld up in there tight so it, it gives you enough room to get this, this uh, upper area pulled into place. Um, I'll try to get this camera set up in front of the truck and we'll, we'll shoot for like a, a high speed or something in our editing here. Hopefully you can put together a, a decent video. Did I miss anything, Joel? So we're um, we're gonna shoot for resting resting this flap opening onto the bottom of the pinch weld. Um, I've seen some guys they'll do their install starting with the top. Um, we always just do the bottom. Easier that way. Yeah, it, it just is. Um, gravity wants wants it to be that way and uh, we'd rather work with gravity than trying to fight it so um, we're gonna go ahead and Joe why don't you do a few pumps in that slot just so I can um, we're shooting for this slot here right? yep it's that slot right there so okay. Joe's just gonna put a little bit in there if we get the old caulking gun working for us be a little nicer if we were uh if we had a pneumatic gun going here but all right I don't, I don't want to sit here all day but i'm just going to show you you get the idea what we're shooting for we, we want to be like probably flush with the tops of that little channel that we're laying it in um that way when these little buggers get flattened out that product is is uh is going to make contact and, and help seal that up so when you're washing your truck you're driving in the rain all that sort of thing it's just going to help so you don't have those drips on the inside of the truck um, the metal the rubber to metal contact is where you're most likely to get your your leaks it's possible to get some past the glass as well you get driving in a hard rain on the outside of the glass the the water is riding up and going up inside but I mean honestly they usually make a pretty good seal when it's glass to rubber um, most of your leaks are gonna be rubber to the uh, windshield frame itself all right guys this is uh, one of the last things we're gonna do here before we um, try to set this windshield and frame what we got here is a little cup with some Dawn dish soap and water a little foam applicator and uh, of acid hound. Say hello, Mabel. Yeah, all right. So you can see Joe's got the uh, the bedding, the sealant applied all the way around. Hopefully, we get minimal mess when we drag the rope in. Sometimes you don't have a slot like this on some of these windshield gaskets. Actually, most of them, you, um, you have to you have to drop your sealant in the same slot as the rope and things get messy but um this is actually a pretty nice gasket i should talk a little bit about the many different kinds of gaskets that could be used on this very same truck um, this just happens to be the very the very simplest of all of them this one if you look at the outside I should have talked about this too. We've got tape on the outside here. After we set the gasket around the glass and get it locked in the channel all the way around, we take our masking tape and we'll tape the rubber gasket to the glass. We try not to come around the edge here of the gasket, but just basically uh, from the face of the glass to the outer face of the gasket. It helps so that when we're pulling on the uh, on the inside, so that sorry I'm getting too close to the camera, so that this gasket doesn't curl around and pull off the glass. 
because that can happen. But um, anyways, back to the gasket types. This one does not have a locking strip. Um, the locking strips actually can make it kind of nice for it. It becomes a little different type of install then. You, you could actually, in, in many cases, install your gasket onto the windshield frame and then drop your glass in and then go about locking your um, locking strip flap. But we, we chose this simple black rubber gasket and we're going to pull it in with the rope. Um, so we got a little bit of soapy water, foam applicator, and last thing we're going to do is I, I honestly hate this, I hate using it because it makes a mess of all the nice new stuff that we've got in place. But we're going to we're going to try to put a little bit of soapy water along and inside this edge here. The foam works really nice because you can squish it down tight and actually fit it inside the slot and, and run a little bit of that soapy slime in there and it just kind of helps for the rope to pull things in but we're going to try to get the camera set up and see if we can get going here right yep all right we're going to do our best to capture this we'll either be on the uh, blooper reel or we'll be successful Corners. We always got to take a look at our corners. Try to make sure that we're good. Um, left to right. So I'm, I'm taking a look at my corner for reference. I'm come over and take a look at Joe's. Try to get them about the same before we start pulling this stuff in. Five-eighths of an inch on your side between the gasket and the outside. I think we might be about an eighth of an inch off to my side. I'm going to try to push it your way just a hair. Yeah. No. Okay. Not there? Okay. So, you know what? We've both got rubber gloves on. Okay, we got the glass set down over the pinch weld, so the the bottom flap, the opening, the, the slot in the rubber is set over the bottom pinch weld, and so we've got a pretty good start automatically. Um, the first portions of the rope poles are really for nothing because the flap, the inner flap is probably already over, but we're both going to start now from the inside. Um, Joe's going to be pulling around that way, I'm going to be pulling around this way, and then we just got to take it as it goes. Wish us luck.
All right, guys, we had to restart things because we lost our video. And this is going terribly slow anyways. But that's how glass installs can go. Um, there's really not a whole lot of shops that do these rubber gasket installs. Everything's pretty much urethane and flush mount glass, that kind of thing. So this is these are almost becoming uh, lost methods. But um, what we're doing, we wish that it was as simple as the pull the rope, the rope, the rope does all the magic for you, the wind, windshield drops into place. Sometimes it goes that way, like I say on back windows or really simple flat windows. You got windows with curves like this, and this is a 1977. Um, we're getting a little ways away from, you know, this is over 40 years ago, um, 45, something like that. So, I mean, these glass patterns, I'm not going to say they're doing a lousy job, but they're not spot on. Um, so if you get a little variance in the curvature, maybe the, maybe the actual dimensions, your gasket's got to make up for all that. And um, so you, you really got to take it easy. You got to take your time. And what we're finding is we're, we're working the bottom on. We get to the top and the top doesn't want to come around. That means we're not down far enough on the bottom. So sometimes you got to work both sides of the gasket. It isn't just the inside. It is a rubber. And in this case, it's rubber on brand new fresh paint. Um, nice grabby, not sticky, but grippy um, clear coat in this case. That rubber really wants to take good traction on that. It isn't just going to slide real nice. So um, what we've had to do, we're using some pick tools. I hate to show you this because I'd hate to have anybody break a window or scratch their paint. But as long as you're, you know, nice and polished around your backsides and stuff, and you watch your tools and be very careful starting and try to hold the hold off of the paint you know try not to don't scratch anything just try to lift the lip sometimes you lift the lip on the outside and the inside and you can get it to to drop down onto the pinch weld so that's what we've been doing joe's been working the inside i've been working the outside pulling it along as we use a plastic pry tool on the top, a little bit of leverage, and we've been able to get the seat down. So now Joe's just cleaning things up a little bit. We really made a mess. Um, this is what happens with the sealant. I mean, we pulled some of these installs off on the very same type of truck, and it just happens like magic. This one just happens to be fighting us today, and we, we know well enough to not try to rush it along. So. We're going to go ahead and um, finish pulling the, uh, pulling the inside the top. So Joe and I want to get in there. And I'm going to get on this bottom lip here. I'm just going to curl this out just to make sure that it is dropping in. And it looks like we're in good shape. Gaskets down on the outside. Gaskets down and in on the inside. I'm going to give a little bit of assist to Joe. I'm going to pull down on the gasket. How's it going in there, Joe? Good. Pretty hard pull or reasonable? Pretty reasonable pull. Okay, that's the other question. I just asked Joe, how's it going? Is it a hard pull? Is it a reasonable pull? He said it's going pretty good. You don't want to do that white knuckle pull with the rope. You see a lot of uh, variance in the gasket strength here. Some of these gaskets are not as strong. The rubber will actually tear. It will stretch all out of place. And the rope can actually saw the rubber. You end up with a tear in it. So we don't want to forge things. 
how far should I go here? You can come all the way to the other one if it's going good, whichever one you want to pull. I'm going to use the palm of my hand and just kind of push down on the gasket. He's trying to control the speed of the pole. If there isn't a whole lot of the lip coming over and catching over the pinch well, you can actually pull the rope too far without having an effect on the gasket lip. Sometimes what we've learned is you get that lip pulled barely over the whole pinch well, and then you can work on the outside kind of pushing and rolling it, and you get that gasket to just kind of roll into place. No, no, you're, you're doing good. It's starting to straighten out. on the outside too. The gasket's laying flatter over here. I can see a little bit more crown on the passenger side. So I don't know if the audio is working that far away. Me and Joe were just talking. Driver's side, the gasket and everything is, is rolled in pretty nice and flat up along the top. And with that, his gasket on the inside has rolled around pretty nice. On the passenger side, the, the gasket is slanted, kind of crowning outward on the outside, and that means his lip on the inside is just barely catching. So we're gonna push a little bit of pressure and try to get that to roll and lock in. chase along there where that rope pulled the flap in just to help it help it climb over the pinch level all the way. Gaining any Joe? Yeah. Okay. I would think so because it looks pretty good about here. It looks like it's seated. So once you get the glass in so it's um, it's all lined up with the pinch roll all the way around. Then you can kind of chase all the way around the perimeter, outside and inside, very carefully with your pick. Get it started underneath the rubber. Lift so you're not gliding on the paint. And just sort of make sure that you get that gasket laid out where it wants to be.
is an example over here. Gasket's kind of folded under. You're flipping it out. And we'll let the side come in a little bit. Now what we got left, we're just going to peel the tape, we're going to use some uh, paper towels, we've got some wax and grease remover, it's just automotive like a paint shop would use, um, it's a solvent based um, paint prep, wax and grease remover, um, we're just going to spray some on our paper towels and it'll, it'll loosen and remove all the residual, all the mess that we've made with the sealant that's leaked out, all the stuff that's gotten onto our hands and we've left little prints everywhere. We're just going to clean all that up and that should do it. You got anything to add, Joe? No. no? So, I don't know, hopefully um, it helps somebody. If it's, if it's not going, don't fight it because they will, they'll crack pretty easy, won't they? Very careful. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah. So, if it's not going well, there's a reason. You got to look basically to the opposite side of where you're fighting, and things aren't resting home well enough. So, you need to just do what you got to do. Like I say, with picks, plastic pry tools, the rope is handy, but it's, uh, it's not magic, right? No. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.